This episode of Manage Smarter is presented by Sales Fuel Coach, our adaptive sales coaching featuring five minute quick coaching personalized to each sales rep. Learn more about Sales Fuel Coach at salesfuel.com. Welcome to the Manage Smarter Podcast with hosts C. Lee Smith and Audrey Strong. We're glad you're here for discussions on new ways to manage smarter, hire, develop, and retain talent, improve results, and propel team performance to new heights. This is the Manage Smarter Podcast. Powerful women. Oh, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Manage Smarter Podcast. I'm Audrey Strong. I'm the Vice President of Communications here at Sales Fuel. And I'm Celie Smith. I'm the President and CEO of Sales Fuel. And I'm not the least bit intimidated. <laughs> well, you should be because Trisha <laughs> Ben is in the house. Hi, Trisha. Hi, Audrey. Hi, Lee. How are Hi. you? Good. We have had the privilege of knowing Trisha for several years now through the C-Suite Network and the Hero Club. So let me explain a little bit about Trisha and then uh, we'll talk about all kinds of great tips she has for gender gap and pay gaps and all that good kind of stuff. Short story, she's a freaking rock star. Yeah, she's a rock star. Uh, <laughs> Trisha Ben, Executive Vice President of the C-Suite Network, General Manager of the Hero Club, which is an invitation-only membership organization for CEOs, founders, and investors. She's an executive within both organizations, and her mission is to build a platform and community that accelerates the success of C-level executives, and she's a leader in creating an executive community of collaboration based on these things, integrity, transparency, and measuring success beyond the numbers alone. That's what's called the hero factor. And get this, she was the Global Chief Marketing and Strategy Officer and U.S. Managing Director within MDC Partners. Uh, just a little bit of billing going on there, just, you know, $3 billion <laughs> um, global uh, holdings. And uh, her leadership drove double-digit growth year over year and new contracts with some of the most important impact players in the world. If you don't have Trisha Ben in your uh, network, you better reach out to her after you get done listening to this podcast. Trisha, thanks for some of your time, really, truly. I am so thrilled to be here. And if we we could just take up all the time talking about how wonderful the two of you are too. So I, <laughs> but thank Aww. you. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you and just get to spend some time together. So Lee says that you two have talked um, and you really do have some tips for women leaders that are a little bit off the beaten path. They're not as traditional in a box kind they're of. Not, they're not as safe. You know what? It's not, not like the stuff what? that everyone feels really comfortable talking about, all the talking heads on stage and stuff. So yeah, I mean, Trisha is like, it, I, what I want to hear from you is like, you know, what do you, what do executive women, uh, what are they doing that they need to stop doing? And, and what are they not doing that they need to start doing? Well, I, Lee, you and I started into a conversation with this, um, with, uh, in the hero club setting. Mm -hmm. And um, the one thing that I just love about Hero Club is uh, it is a values aligned group. You know, so everybody's pledged to lead with integrity, transparency, give back to their community, share in their success. Um, and there's a, a respect that everybody with all the diversity we have comes to the table as a peer mm -hmm. and, um, and will be given the respect due to somebody who really wants to make a positive impact with their success and every community that they serve and are part of and so on. Um, and so I always say, you know, we don't avoid the difficult topics and, and there are always those conversations where, you know, it can be tough. It can be challenged because you have, you know, a horse in the race, so to speak, um, in so many ways and we all do. And, um, and so, you know, I think one of the things that I, I found over time and I've kind of, um, uh, come around the other way in terms of talking about women executives and being a woman executive. Uh, I really just had my nose to the grindstone and and uh, and worked like a maniac. I'm so driven and I'm so excited about taking on new challenges and and really having a massive impact, being able to make a difference with the success that you can have in business. Um, so I think one of the things is really just being open to the conversation and being uh, you know creating a safe environment and and certainly getting yourself into a safe environment where you can be part of you know, extending that olive branch and the conversations. And I know the conversation we had, Lee, uh, you know, it was literally one of those of, you know, what's going on with, with women executives and where are the real challenges? And the big one that I, I can't help going to first and foremost is it's not about more education or qualifications or, or certifications for women. It's about being part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, being integrated into those opportunities 
to, to really be taking on leadership roles and to understand that, um, that we can be, you know, uh, at, uh, trusted shoulder to shoulder uh, when going to war. And, and there's so much about being an executive that is similar to that notion of you're going into battle and who you have with you is so critical. You need to know most importantly, skill set is just a basic requirement. Um, you need to know that that person has your back and you're going to win together. Um, and you have to be aligned in terms of what winning means and the terms and conditions of that success. But, um, but ultimately, you need to know you can be side to side. So, so really creating the opportunities for that real diverse interaction is just critically important. One of the things I think that you do exceptionally well is that you don't shy away, you know, with, from mixing it up with the guys. And it's like you can hang with any of the boys, whether it, whether it be tossing them down or whether it be sharing <laughs> ideas or fixing problems or speaking or anything like that. It's like, and I think that's, that's important too is to not shy away from that competition and, and get in there and mix it up because, you know, us guys have to compete with the guys and so, and so do yeah. you. And, you. and you do it extremely well. And, and what got me on that tangent when we started talking about that, Lee, is um, I was reading an article and it said, for women, you don't need to compete with men. And I said, this is the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. Of course you have to compete. <laughs> you, know, there's, you, you have to compete. Now, now, who you're competing with and how you frame that, of course, there's all kinds of different levels of that conversation you can have. And ultimately, you want to be competing with yourself in terms of how mm -hmm. you get to your grade. And how do you bring people on your journey and surround yourself with people that will help you get to your great and that you can help get to their great. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, you know, jumping in um, and, and, you know, my, my first example of that was uh, when I was an executive, um, I, I started, I was very fortunate. I started out on a project that's still going. It's, over, it's well oh, wow. over 20 years old. I ran it for 18 years across the border. I took it back and forth with me to different companies and so on. Uh, Canada, the U.S., um, and um, and the senior executive on that program uh, wanted to go golfing, and I was in public affairs. I was the only female on the team, and I, I through circumstances, ended up being the senior leader on this program. And you know, it was time to go golfing. Now, I'd never golfed. I wasn't a golfer. Didn't know how to golf, <laughs> and and so I had the option of jump in or jump back. And one of my senior executive, um, you know, mentors and, and people that I reported through would take that client golf thing. And I thought, well, you know, I was a competitive figure skater. I can learn. <laughs> and at least if I know the rules well enough that I'm not obstructing the game, then I've got several hours in the course with this client. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. um, and the, and the, the funnest part of it was he wasn't the greatest golfer. So mm -hmm. I could they hold never her. are no <laughs> yeah. and I, I play the game well enough to let them win, which is great. <laughs> you cannot complain when you're outside of doors with great leaders where you can be doing great business, and you know I don't I, it's funny, I haven't been golfing for quite some time now, but but back in that time with the clients I worked with, it was a very uh, very much an important part of the business and um, and so you know I jumped in and I had uh, it, you know this kind of this story that I play in my mind of okay I jump in first then I figure out how I'm going to do it and um, and 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 keep remembering just because this is something that frequently men have done previously doesn't mean that they had experience with it before they jumped in to do it either oh, and in no. fact, the research, <laughs> research shows the opposite right so the research shows men feel they're fully ready when they're about 75 percent well so one of the things lee also said though trisha was that you know you want to get in there and mix it up and also what did you say not snowflake out <laughs> um, try not to be super sensitive and all that kind of stuff. I can't, I can't say the word snowflake. <laughs> um, not from, you're not from Canada. Come on, you're from Canada. I was like, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, no, I, you know, it, it's, it, I think, um, actually, I, it, it, my challenge isn't, you know, I don't, I don't, um, I don't have that kind of like, come on, suck it up, you know, big girl, big boy, whatever. Um, literally, it's just one of those like, have fun with it, jump in. Nobody, like, just because somebody enjoys it or just because it creates a great opportunity to be with a business leader where you can be coming up with great solutions together, building deeper bonds and so on, doesn't mean you have to be great at it, you know? You, and, and there's so many people that, you know, it might be a traditional male activity that they've never done before. I, I learned how to shoot two years ago because I started running the Hero Club and we did a shooting event. Um, and, uh, and, you know, 
was I going to be the best at it? No, I was just learning. And but there were plenty of men that were just learning too, older, younger, every you know, it's all it's all a mix. So um, I think it's one of those things of you know, jump in, have fun with it, and um, and um, don't play the tapes that tell us that we can't do it. And and I would give that advice to anybody. Um, and I think just for for women, you know, we were talking about how. There's, there's research that shows, you know, that women uh, tend to hold them, like, think that they're not quite prepared or not ready enough when they're well over 100% capable, uh, whereas, you know, men will be at about 75% and assume that they're capable for a role, uh, hmm. responsibilities and skill sets of that role. So, and that's just research. That's data. Um, and, and, and so, you know, I think it's one of those things that we need to be working through and giving ourselves permission to jump in and, and, you know, and sometimes we're not going to be great at things and that's okay. And sometimes we need to let the men in our lives and other people in our lives do things and they may not do it hundred percent either. And that's okay too. You know? um, hey, uh, Tricia, what, watch, watch me do this. <laughs> you know? I, I, I remember, you know, things come crashing down all of a sudden the ambulance is coming, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's so many things you can talk about with this. And, and you know, as I said, I, I never really talked about being a women executive. I felt like I had a lot of years to live. And, and I have been a senior executive of three enterprise-sized organizations. So mm-hmm. it's been quite a time now. And, and for several years, my husband's been a stay-at-home father, a non-traditional choice, of course. But, you know, there are certain things now where it's like, okay, well, I've made these choices. And it's not to say that's the choice for everybody. It's to say, hey, jump in. What works for you? What works in your life? Choose the right people to go on your journey with you. Um, give yourself permission. Give them permission. Um, you know, uh, my husband can do everything I can do. Can I do some of those things better? I'm sure. <laughs> can he do some of those things better? I'm sure. Um, but at the end of the day, who's going to enjoy it and who can do it? And, and how does it make sense in terms of how you split things up? And, and it's the same thing with your teams. You know, that's another whole thing. Um, you know, really important piece of advice is focus on strengths. Don't pick apart what, what you can't do or what other people in your team or, you know, your, your uh, collaborations, your partners and so on. Don't pick apart what they can't do. Focus on the strengths and how you build around that and, um, and give yourself permission to do that with yourself too. And having that diversity on a team is so important, especially when things get, things get a little tough, right, Tricia? Exactly. You know, so, so uh, I, I really, uh, I, I, you don't want to see it, of course, but, but when you see the strength of diversity is really truly when there's challenges. So you get a new competitor in the market, there's disruption in the market, the economy starts tanking, all those types of things. That's when you see diversity in teams really coming through and being incredibly powerful. Join us next week for part two of our conversation with Trisha Ben and learn her top tips on what to focus on in the C-suite to harness maximum success. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and recommend on iTunes, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more great information at salesfuel.com.